Awesome, so holes drilled, hole drill here, just a pilot hole for now. And what I wanted to see was, just drop a shoulder bolt in there for now. You know, this isn't a reamed hole, so there is a little bit, actually a pretty good amount of slop. That will go away when we do a better hole there. Drop a clamp in here, and you can see, actually rotates around really pretty freely. What th that was kind of one of my questions, is how much, um, I don't know, how much effort does that take? drops out well. <laughs> I made one huge mistake. Just never even thought of it. The uh, idea was you would have a vertical stack of these right here. So when it rotates back to here, it picks up another one. Well, that means I can't have this piece be a standalone piece. It has to be a full circle because otherwise, let's say your feed stack is right here, when it gets to here, it's gonna drop a clamp out into no man's land here, and that doesn't make sense. So I gotta recut this little piece of 16 gauge, not a big deal, and have it be a full circle. And the question is, this is where I'm not good. What do I do for, that circle has to have a way to get rotated around It'll just have to be underneath, so I've got to put an axle through, and that or direct drive would be easiest to come up and do that rotation. So that's what I got to chew on. She's mounted on the machine. At least the base plate is. Um, so awesome, and it's actually a lot more rigid than I thought. I still will still need to support it, especially since we've got a stack of parts down over here. But you can see we won't have that much machine travel when it's actually working, but that'll be fine. And then I had this pro uh, motor left over from a project we were working on. It's a pretty darn beefy motor. It's a little bit higher speed than I want, but it's, it's a, see what's the spec on it. It's a 25 amp quarter horse, 24 volt DC gear motor that I think is about uh, no load RPM of 60 or so. I can probably, well, so we're gonna use a uh, dimension engineering, one of these, I think, saber tooth drivers. They are awesome. And I think we can even slow it down uh, with that driver. But what I wanna do now is just take a look. The idea is we can mount this in line and it'll fit, you can see it'll clear and it'll, the, sh the shaft will be, nah, it's hard to see, but over here, but it'll still clear my uh, way covers. And then it can sit at kind of a four, four o'clock position and be out of the way and give us our rotation. It's on a two inch bolt hole pattern, so that should be pretty easy to deal with as well. We got our feed mount piece. I gotta say, folks, God, I'm excited to get our Haas, really, but the tool path quality uh, and the cut quality coming off, I mean, it's just, I love machining. So the test now is going to be, will it feed our parts in? I've got some uh, colored plastic shim stock because I want the height to be just high enough. I'll show you here. so that a clamp will fl freely slide through, but not much extra. Um, I honestly meant to have that as a machined height. I took a little bit too much off, so for now, we'll have to use shim stock, not a big deal. Here's the question. So slide our plate underneath here. Uh, 
And this is obviously not perfect, but if I catch one, boom, caught it, drops out. Caught it. Caught it. Oops. Caught it. That is awesome. That actually works way better than I thought. I don't know if my vertical riser posts are gonna hold a really tall stack. They might though. That was way better than I thought. So obviously the alignment and repeatability as it rotates is going to be key because it is a, still a little bit of a tight fit, but oh, that was awesome. So we're gonna go recut this guy as a full circle and then we'll start getting some motors and stuff hooked up. Uh, stay tuned for, for part three or part four, I guess. Uh, this is gonna be an awesome project, folks. Thanks for tuning in and commenting and thumbs up. Take care, see you soon. disc is cut after we sanded it down though with the pneumatic uh, dremel type tool i did use a one of my norton stones i don't want any burrs up here because it's going to track or drag so i did a quick just stoning on it to make sure that that was nice and flat the goal here was you know as soon as you get over it and it falls right through keeping them flat is the key here. So if we look at a flatter plane, oops, like that, but still fairly good, fairly snug fit. I can show you like that. Not a lot, a little bit of slop, not actually not really much slop at all. And I'll show you how we're going to deal with that anyways uh, on the machine. Next, we've got our quarter inch hole in here, but I want to go ahead and drill that out for our shaft, but also put this bolt hole pattern into our plate. We want the motor mounted on the underside, but at about this sort of an angle. And this is on one inch centers or two inch bolt hole pattern. So let's go make a little jig that we can use. Unfortunately, because I drilled this hole out to a quarter inch and it's not even a precise quarter inch, there isn't a super easy way to you know, get a bolt hole pattern centered around that. We just covered this in our organization video, but I love it. I knew I had some 3 8 by 3 inch stock. Grab a piece. If you cut aluminum, you got to have a DeWalt DW872 saw. And if you buy one of these saws, the factory base sucks. We, Saunders Machine Works, make this really awesome fixture plate replacement and uses these auto adjust toggle clamps. But here, it's even easier. We're just gonna take our piece of aluminum up against the included fence and we'll use one of our Saunders clamps. And by holding the workpiece on both sides, it's safer and it's less likely that workpiece is going to move on you and that's going to keep your blade lasting a lot longer. Scrap some dowel pins. Uh, 
quarter by five eighths should work. Cool. Okay, so I want the motor, you know, just out of the way over here. In fact, let's just call it, these two are just about parallel to this bottom edge. So something like that. In fact, yeah, that should work fine. I'm gonna put it right here. If you've never used a mag drill before, adjustable RPMs and then this magnetic base, most mag drills have a magnetic base, an electromagnet, when you turn it off, this uh, comes off your surface, obviously. But the difference is this one has this lever here that when I adjust it, I've got all this interface here between the base of the drill and the magnetic thing that lets me dial in and you can get pretty darn accurate holes. Although as soon as we finish cleaning up and restoring that, uh, radial arm drill over there, that's going to get used for stuff like this. We've got our motor mounted. Awesome. We'll, we need to build a little bushing up here that will allow the rotation of the motor shaft to rotate this platter uh, around here. And then I want this to be centered pretty well. I'll check it here in a second. But what will, the real trick will be using this piece and we can tram it in. That way the pieces drop because that's the, that's the worry is that you need this to feed from the feed chute here into this. Once they rotate around, the location of the graving isn't as critical and dropping out, I'm not worried about. So that's the trick. Uh, let's work on building this piece up.
I've got my <clears throat> pin, and I turned down a little section here. So the idea is this will fit um, and locate on here. It's a little bit tight. We're going to tap it in, and then Jared's going to tack it in there. And this will set on top of the platter. And um, I don't have a metric brooch set, so I can't put a keyway slot down here to match the uh, keyway slot on the shaft. But I did two things. We've got a larger quarter eight uh, quarter by 28 on this side, which will just push against the sh motor shaft. And then over here, I did a 632, which will go inside it. We don't have that much radial torque on this. Uh, I'm not too concerned about it, uh, but if it's a problem, we'll take this out and we can uh, buy a brooch set and put it on there. 